Seeds, trees, and mountains. Next on the Good News Program. The program you're about to watch is part of a free series we are making available to you as a gift from Greg Fritz Ministries, entitled, You Have the Spirit of Faith. Visit gregfritz.org to download the MP3s and watch the streaming video for free by entering code FREE at checkout. Are you tired of hearing bad news? Tune into the good news of the gospel. Welcome to Good News with Greg Fritz. Hello, I'm Greg Fritz. Welcome to the Good News program. I don't know if this faith teaching is helping you, but it's really helping me. We are feeding on the things we're feeding you, and it's good. You're going to like this today. We've been talking about the fact that you have the same spirit of faith as any of the Bible heroes, and you have enough faith to walk by faith, to live by faith, to fight the good fight of faith, to overcome by faith. It's so important to put these principles into practice in your life and they will make an immediate difference in your mind, your attitude, the way you view life. You can be happy even if you're surrounded by trouble. You can have peace even though everything around you is disturbed and disturbing. And these are great days to live by faith or as, as Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5.7, we walk by faith and not by sight. If you're walking by sight today, you are probably pretty concerned about the state of the world and the way things are going. But we walk by faith. And we know that no matter what happens in the world around us, God has not changed. His word has not changed. His promises to us have not changed. And we're here to do what God put us here on earth to do. Nothing can stop that. That's really not between you and someone else or you and the government or you and the economy. Your destiny is between you and God. And the Bible says that we're followers of those who through faith and patience inherited the promises. The only difference between us and them is this is our turn. It's our turn now. This is, uh, this is when we get to serve God in our lifetime. And that's exciting. I want to make you aware of the fact that we have study notes. And you need to get these study notes. It's full of scriptures. And uh, you can go through those study notes and remember this teaching. Continue to feed on it. It'll be a huge blessing to your life. And we also have a USB drive. This is a special bundle that we put together uh, for people that may, be, may not want to go to the internet and download something, you don't, none, none of that makes sense to you. This is a great tool. This is a USB drive. It's got lots and lots of memory. And so uh, there's a plug here, and this plugs into your USB port. You may have one of these in your car and thought that it was just to charge your phone, but it can also be an input. That, that means you can plug this in, and you can get all of the teachings that we put on this uh, on this uh, bundle in your car on your smart tv or in your computer so we have all the teaching on you have the spirit of faith we also included a series i called the spirit of faith that's 35 sessions all together and we have this series this is a an audio series this there are four messages called uh, god likes faith and they're about 50 minutes each so there's hours and hours of teaching on here, and we're offering this uh, to our viewers for a gift of $30 or more. Call our helpline. We'd love to hear from you. That's a great way for you to check in, find out what's going on, let us know what you think, ask questions, get prayer. Call our helpline. We would love to hear from you. And if you call and it goes to voicemail, please leave a message, and we will call you back probably within the hour uh, we put a high priority on, on our viewers' calls. So please call and take advantage of our new helpline. We'd love to hear from you today. I want to begin here where we began in our last episode. There's just so much to, to, to draw from these scriptures. But uh, Luke 17, 5, the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. They felt the lack of faith. They felt a need for faith. And many of us may feel that way today. And by, by, by um, going to the Lord and asking for faith, they really, they really were um, 
trying to thwart the principles of faith because you don't ask for more faith. You don't pray for faith. You don't get uh, people together to try to, to, to get God to give us faith. That's not how faith comes. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. And faith, every man has been given the measure of faith. So uh, Jesus said to them, and I'm going to go through this quickly because we covered it in the last episode and you really should watch that. But uh, Jesus said this, first of all, I'm not going to give you more faith. That He's not going to give them more faith. That's not how this, this ends. He said, if you had faith as a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be pulled up by the roots and planted by the seed and it would obey you. Or planted in the sea and it would obey you. So what he's basically saying is this, and this is the principle and we want to build on this today. He's saying you don't need more faith. If you had a speck of faith, a mustard seed is just a very small seed. If you had a speck of faith, you could say to this mulberry tree, be pulled up by the roots, and it would obey you. So what he's saying is you need to use the faith you've got. And, and that's really the bottom line, is people, the Christians especially, we have faith. And, and if we're not going to use what we have, it wouldn't do any good to give, give us more. You don't need a lot more if you're not using it. So there's so much potential in a little bit of faith that we're not really maximizing the potential. If every human uses only 10% of their brain, what Jesus was telling these guys is, you're not even using 1% of your faith. And if you're not using 1% of your faith, I could double it, triple it. I could give you more faith and it still wouldn't change anything in your life because you have to use it. You have to put it to work. And in giving these illustrations, here he's talking about a tree and a mustard seed. In Matthew 17, he says this, If you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible to you. So he just up the stakes. Notice he didn't talk about how their faith was bigger, but he said the problem's bigger. In Luke 17, he said, if you had faith as a mustard seed, you could pull up a tree. In Matthew 17, he said, if you've had faith as a mustard seed, you could move a mountain. Trees and mountains represent problems and challenges and obstacles that you face in everyday life. So the overwhelming message here is simply this. You have enough faith to change your world. You've got the potential to see things around you move, change, get in place. And if what you're dealing with is pressure because of finances or social pressure or, or uh, anxiety, mental pressure or physical problems, all of these things represent mountains and trees. And there is enough potential in every Christian to move these mountains and trees. In other words, anybody can choose to believe God. And I'm encouraging you to make this choice, to choose to use your faith. Use what you already have. This helps us in so many ways. You know, it's so easy to get our eyes on other people, on a preacher or somebody else, or some figment of our imagination. You know, I just need a break. I need somebody to help me. I need some kind of a lucky... Uh, you know, if I could just win the lottery, I just need something that I don't have. I want to do something that I cannot do. And if, if the enemy can get you to think that way, he can keep you bound. He can keep you hemmed in. But once you realize, I've already got faith. I can do this for myself. I don't, we need to be more independent minded, you know, like a child. You try to help a child, I'll do it myself. Have you ever seen kids like that? That is a great attitude. They're going to learn and grow quicker than somebody that just sits around and expects everybody to serve them. And so we need to be like that in our spiritual life. You don't need a preacher or, or a special person or some special feeling, some anointing that you don't have, some breakthrough that you can't ever quite get. You know, you don't need these outside uh, forces in order for you to believe God. You have the measure of faith. You have, Jesus used this mustard seed to just tell us, you got enough faith to start. You don't have to get ready for this. You don't have to go try to get more in order to, to get involved in the faith walk. Just start right where you are. And the way you start 
is, is in these verses as well. Jesus said, if you had faith, you could say to this mulberry tree. That's where faith is released, is by what you say. So if you have a person that's always complaining and whining and always looking for somebody else to help them, that's not faith. That's using zero faith. Faith, if it's real Bible faith, is going to be heard. You're going to hear something such as, you know, uh, lay your hands on her and she will live. If I touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. Speak the word only, the centurion said, and my servant shall live. These are faith words. These are, are words that represent a measure of faith. I don't know if it's a mustard seed or if it's bigger than that, but, but, there, but there's faith at the root of that, but it's not something you can't do. You know, the people in the Bible that received from Jesus were not, you know, I think the Word of God goes to great lengths to prove to us that these were not some, the, some elite special people that had some in, inside track to God. They were normal, everyday people just like us. They faced problems. They had fears and challenges and limitations just like any human being. But there was a group of people in the Gospels mentioned them over and over again that chose to believe God like the four men that brought their friend on a stretcher to Jesus. They believed God. They didn't have to do it. They weren't supermen. They hadn't been schooled for this. They didn't have some special faith diploma. They just decided, I'm going to believe God today. You know, in that instance, I believe that's in Luke, um, is it Luke 17? Wherever it is, Luke 15. But these guys brought their friend to Jesus and the place was packed. And it would have been so easy for them to just say, you know, we just missed our timing here. Our timing was off. The meeting's already started. Every seat is taken. Let's go home and let's come back at a better time. Let's try to find out where he's going to be next and get there early. Most normal people would have done that. But these guys, they decided, you know what, we're going to believe God and we're going to believe God today and we're not going to let anything get in our way. That kind of faith receives from God. And can I just tell you, you're capable of that. That's not beyond you. This is not something that only a few people can ever achieve. That's the great thing about faith. It, it, it puts everybody on the same level. We all can believe. The question is this, who's going to choose to believe? Who's going to be those in this generation that get their friend and find a way to tear a hole in the roof or go to Jesus and grab the hem of his garment. You know, the book's still being written. Today, it's you and I. We have the opportunity to believe God. And one of the things that stirred me in this whole faith teaching and as I've studied and prepared to get these messages to you, what stirred me was to see Christians running scared in these days, to see Christians that are overwhelmed with fear and dread, just like everybody else. And something rose up in me and said, we have a God. We need to live like people who have a God. That's different than everyone else. We don't have to, you know, I've said this before, but it bears repeating. When you believe God, when you bring God into the equation, then normal math doesn't work anymore. I understand without God, 2 plus 2 equals 4. This problem plus this problem equals disaster. I know. I'm human. I, I see the statistics. I hear the same news you do. But I, I believe we've made a big mistake as Christians by leaving God out of the equation. These people that come up with all these predictions, don't, they don't believe in God. They don't understand the walk of faith. They don't know how God can change things overnight. When you believe God and you begin to confess the Word of God, speak the Word of God, agree with God, then this problem plus this problem plus God does not equal disaster. You can't do math the same way. And so it, it, it's really been a, a burden in my, and that's why we've accelerated these recordings. I, I want to get the message out to, to Christians, to my brothers and sisters. We have a God. 
things are not going to end the way they think they will. We have a happy, wonderful ending. We live happily ever after. That's who we are. We are the people who live happily ever after. Why? We have a God. And, and I'm telling you, the enemy and the media and the forces of this world are trying to rob that from you. They're trying to tell you it's not going to be happily ever after. It's going to be sad and depressed and, and bleak and terrible and it's going to be failure and misery. I, I reject all of that. God hasn't changed that much. His word hasn't changed. His promises have not changed. Circumstances, yes. Storms come and go, yes. They, there are all kinds of things that have come on the horizon that maybe we're not used to. Maybe we haven't faced before. But none of them are greater than God. And none of them change the promises that God has already made us. You can hold on to those things. And by doing that, you can be just as happy today as you ever were. You can be just as free today as you ever were because nothing that's happened in the world today has changed God's covenant with you. The New Testament reads just the same. And His Word will never pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away. But God's Word is eternal. And He meant what He said. And it's true for you today. It just takes a little bit of faith. It takes our decision, our faith, our choice to make that faith option or to take the faith option. You have that option. I feel sorry for people that don't have a God. They don't have the faith option. They have to deal with whatever life throws them. They have to deal with whatever the news says. And I mean, they're scared. And they're, they're running scared. They're, sometimes people run from things that aren't there. And sometimes there's something there. Uh, but they don't have God. They don't have faith in God like we do. It's time to shine. It's time to take the promises of God and really use them and, and show the world that, that our God is alive and, and uh, He is more powerful than anything else in the world, that, that faith in God really does work. Let me give you this next one because we're talking about seeds and trees and mountains. And so let's talk about another mountain here. Mark 11, uh, Jesus went to eat the figs from a tree and you know the story and the figs didn't have any figs so he cursed the tree and uh, I, I'm not telling you to go curse trees that's a waste of our energy at this point but I think Jesus did this to teach us a great faith lesson so he cursed the tree now nothing happened uh, and that's a good that's a good lesson sometimes you begin to speak the word of faith and nothing seems to change but that doesn't mean that that it's not changed. It just means that it hadn't happened yet. Faith works. So Mark chapter 11, verse 20. Uh, they came back by this tree, and in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. So they were, you know, impressed, surprised, like any of us would be. And Jesus answered, and I'm telling you, he gave them a faith lesson. And this is for all of us. We all need to be encouraged by this. In verse 22, he said to them, have faith in God. Now that is a word for all of us. He didn't say, now some of you are going to be able to have faith in God. Some of you can do this and some of you can't. Or this is just for the elite. This is just for you 12 and no more. I mean, this is, don't try this at home. You're with me now. You can do it. No, this is for all of us. This word is for every human. Anybody can do this. And that's why God likes faith. I have that whole series on God likes faith. And the, the, the root of it is this. God likes faith because everybody can do it. It leaves nobody out. It puts everybody on the same level. And that's really what he's saying here is, hey, you guys have faith in God. You can do it. You're able to do it. You need to choose to do it. Have faith in God. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, now we're back to mountains, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes those things which he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. There again, you see the way to release faith. If you're not using your faith, this is the way you could tell it. If somebody is using their faith, this is the way you can tell it. First, the first indicator is what they're saying. In other words, that mountain's not going to go anywhere 
if you don't say it. You could have all the faith in the world. You could be the greatest container of faith that the world's ever seen. But if you don't speak to the mountain, it's not going to move. And that's really the point he was making in Luke 17. When they said increase our faith, he said, well, if you had any faith at all, a mustard seed worth of faith, you could speak to this mulberry tree. Do what? Speak to it. You don't think it out of the ground. You don't sit there and have some sort of an out-of-body experience and move the tree. You don't get filled with an anointing and vibrate until you lay hands on the tree and see it uprooted and cast into the sea. You speak to the tree and you speak to the mountain. And this is the limiter, really. It, it, it's, it, this is the number one limiter of faith being released. And this is why I can say... Uh, that Christians, they may be using 10% of their brain, but many don't use any. Uh, they use 0% of their faith. So, well, how, do you, how can you say that? Do you have some kind of a faith meter? How do you judge that? It's very simple. What are they saying? If they're worrying and complaining and sad and poor old me and I'm just holding out till the end, that is not faith. They have faith. They've been given the measure of faith. If they're born again, I know they, by grace they were saved through faith. And that not of themselves, it was a gift of God. I know they've got faith because they, you, you can't have Jesus without faith. But they're not using it or you'd hear it. <laughs> I could say it this way. When's the last time you spoke to a tree? When's the last time you spoke to a mountain? Even Jesus himself, when the storm came up on the lake and they were, they were, the boat was sinking, he didn't just... He didn't stand in that boat and go, Father, you know what to do. He didn't do that. That's really not faith. He didn't say, guys, let's just hold hands and all go down together. No, he didn't say, let's hold on and hope for the best. He spoke to that storm. And so if you're not speaking your faith, it's not working for you. Man, I've got so, I've got so much to talk about in this area uh, that, you know, we got more series and things. That, that, in fact, I have a series. If you really want to get into this, I have a series on my website called Faith Speaks. And, uh, and, and we really do use Luke 17, 5 as the, the basis for that whole series, Faith Speaks. And, and I do it this way. Uh, here's what Jesus said. If you had faith, this is Luke 17, 5 and 6. If you had faith as a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree. So we leave the we leave out the mustard seed and the mulberry tree just for the sake of study. And we just simplify it to this, to nouns and verbs. If you have faith, you could say. And that, if you just eliminate all the, the imagery, it, it boils down to this. Jesus is saying, if you have faith, you can say. And, and, and I make the point that the reason that, you, that, you, that he says it this way is because that's what faith does. Faith speaks. So if you had a shovel, you could say it this way. Let's put a shovel in there. And we could say, if you had a shovel, you could dig. You could put a car in there and say, if you had a car, you could drive. If you had an airplane, you could fly. Why? Because that's what cars and shovels and airplanes do. But if you have faith, you can speak. Why? That's what faith does. If it's not speaking, folks, it's not faith. And I don't care how good you feel. You can sit around and say, God loves me, I love God, and isn't, isn't life wonderful, and I believe the Bible, and it's such a good book, and I've read it all. That's fine, but that's not faith. Faith speaks. Faith doesn't sit in the boat and worry. Faith doesn't sit in the boat and try to love each other better. You know, they didn't, when they were in the middle of the storm, they didn't say, you know, your problem, guys, is you just aren't loving each other enough. I told you love is the greatest commandment. Now, Peter, you forgive John, and Thomas, you forgive James. And y'all just get this right, and let's all apologize and get love working here. That's, love is important. It's the greatest thing. But in an instance like that, what you need is faith. To get to the other side, you have to have faith. Faith has to be working, and faith speaks. So if it's not speaking, it's not faith. Wow, I don't think I can say it any better than that. Let me read this again and, and leave you with this because, listen, this puts it within everybody's reach. This is not out of your reach. You can start putting these things 
into practice and your life can change today. Your outlook on the world and the worlds around you can change today. Let faith begin to come to the rescue. Let faith begin to, to bring comfort and peace and assurance to your life right now. You don't have to wait for things to change. You change things by faith. You begin, and the first thing you change is yourself, your own mind, and you begin by speaking. Stop saying what you see. Stop repeating the bad news of the day, the worst news you've heard. Quit doing that. You're working against yourself and begin to speak God's word. So Jesus answered, answered and said to them, Have faith in God. For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believe those things he says will be done, he will have faith whatever he says. Well, those are the words of Jesus. This isn't some kind of faith preacher or faith formula that was invented by man. Those were the words of Jesus. And they worked in Bible days. We've seen it. I've given you instance after instance where it worked, and it'll work for you. Well, did you get anything out of that? We are moving on. I've got more to, to go. I'm going to talk about how to be a doer of the word in our next episode. You don't want to miss that. Listen, if you enjoy this program and you'd like to help me do more of them, consider being a partner with this ministry. You know, we don't have sponsors. We don't have corporations that are helping, you know, pay the bills here. This is, this is talking about faith. This is a, a ministry of faith. We trust uh, God to speak to people. And in many cases, he has them partner with our ministry. Pray about being a partner for the next 12 months. Call our helpline. Or go to my website, I have a whole partner page, and it explains the different levels of partnership. We'll send you a free gift. We pray for you. We give you discounts on our, uh, on our products. We'd love to hear from you today. God's growing this ministry. God's growing our partner base. And I'd love for you to pray about being one of those for the next 12 months. God bless you today. We're going to continue this teaching in our next episode. You don't want to miss it. Until then, remember, the good news is so good. The bad news doesn't matter. To order your copy of this series, call our helpline at 918-749-7744 Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Central Time. Hey, I'd just like to remind you that uh, this program is out on many different platforms. And if you'd like to get more of these programs or see some that we've done in the past, we have a YouTube channel, Greg Fritz Ministries YouTube channel. We have hundreds of of episodes of our program there. I have a Facebook page. I would love for you to join our group and we're gonna do many more uh, Facebook live events and so you'd be in line to see that. We'd love to connect with you on social media. So go to the website, go online and check it out. Are you tired of hearing bad news? Partner with us to tell the world about the good news of Jesus Christ. The faithful financial support of our partners enables us to produce the Good News program. We invite you to donate and partner with us today. Learn more at gregfritz.org. Greg Fritz has been changing lives through the good news of the gospel for over 35 years. This good news will inspire, inform, and change you so you can live daily in all the promises of God.